everybody. My name is Nicole Fredrickson and I work as a biologist for the Pacific Salmon Foundation. So today we are here on Vancouver Island and we are going to be talking about some of the features of Pacific Salmon and specifically we'll be looking at these pink salmon and looking at their external features and talking about some of the functions of those features. And then we're going to cut the fish open and do a dissection and look at their internal organs and talk about the function and structures of those also. So we've got two different fish here. This one is a male and this one is a female. And you can see that they look a little bit different. When the fish are out in the ocean, they look very similar, but when they come back to spawn, they start to undergo certain changes in their bodies and they start to get ready to spawn. And so that's where you see differences in males and females. The males tend to develop a hump in their back and they develop this hooked jaw, whereas the females don't have those features. And the purpose for that is that it helps with Spawning um, with the male's hooked jaw, they can fend off other males if they're trying to mate with a female. So we'll get into the external features of the fish. Starting here with this fleshy piece of tissue and that is called the operculum. And so the operculum's main purpose is really to cover up the gills and protect them because they're very fragile. The next thing we'll look at is something along the mid-center of the, of the fish's body. This is called the lateral line. It's a little bit difficult to see on these fish because they're in their spawning colors, but it does run along the mid-length of their body. It acts as a sensory organ. It allows the fish to detect vibrations and movement in the water. And so it can detect if there's predators nearby, if there's prey nearby. And it can also help them detect if they're in a school, where the other fish are in the school and helps them to prevent bumping into each other or getting too close to each other. Okay, so next we'll look at the fins of the salmon. So you can see there's a number of different fins on the salmon. And in general, the main purpose of the fins is to stabilize and propel the fish. So it's what helps them move and swim and turn in the water. The first fin we'll look at is this one on the top of the fish. And this is called the dorsal fin. So this is really used to help stabilize the fish. The dorsal fin also helps if the fish wants to make any kind of sudden turns. The next is the adipose fin. It's this small fleshy fin behind the dorsal fin. And for a long time, fisheries biologists weren't really sure what the purpose of that fin was. More recent studies have shown that this fin might be like the lateral line, it might also be a sensory organ and it might help these fish maneuver better in turbulent or fast water. Another thing that is important to know about the adipose fin is in situations where fish are raised in a hatchery, the hatcheries will clip off this adipose fin when the fish is just a little fry. So if you catch a fish, that doesn't have this fin, a, a salmon, um, that means that it was raised in a hatchery. The next fin is the caudal fin or the tail fin. And this fin basically is like a steering wheel or it's like the rudder on a boat. And this helps the fish turn. The next one is on the bottom of the fish and that is called the anal fin and again this fin is used just to stabilize the salmon it's kind of like how it keeps its balance 
the next fins, these are actually paired fins, so they've got two of these and they're on both sides. You can see one here. That is called the pelvic fins. And these are used for steering, balance, and stabilization. And lastly, we've got the pectoral fins. Again, paired fins, so salmon have one of these on each side. And they're also used for steering and balance. And these ones are particularly special because they help the fish move up and down in the water column. That is the external anatomy of our salmon. Now that we've looked at the outer features of these pink salmon, we're gonna start digging in and looking at some of the inner features. So we'll start with looking under the operculum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off the operculum so we can get a better look at the gills. The gills are really similar to our lungs. So we get oxygen from the air that we breathe. Salmon gets oxygen from the water that comes in through their mouth and it passes over their gills. Their gills remove this oxygen and the salmon can use this to breathe. So if we look a little bit closer, can you see these white bits here? They almost look like teeth. Those are called the gill rakers. And the purpose of the gill rakers are to help guide food that the salmon eats into its stomach instead of out through the gills. So now everybody grab your salmon diagram. So we've looked at the gills. Now you can find the gills on your diagram and cut them out and see if you can find the right spot on your fish for the gills. Now we're going to look at the inner organs of this fish. So we're starting here at the vent and we're going to cut all the way up the body cavity. have to be careful when we're cutting so we don't cut through the stomach. There we go. Make a little flap so we can really see up into the fish. All right, there we go. Now we can see the insides of our pink salmon. So the first thing that we will look at is this, one of the largest organs in the fish's body. And it's really a powerhouse organ. This is the liver. And it has a lot of different functions. It works a lot like your liver. It produces bile. It helps store energy. It detoxifies the blood and it helps with nutrient absorption and hormone production. So the liver is one of the biggest organs in the fish's body. We've talked about that. See if you can find it in your diagram and then cut it out and put it in the correct position in your fish's body. Did you put your liver here? Next, we will look up here 
Can you guys think of what this little organ might be? This is the heart. So again, a fish's heart is similar to your heart in that it helps to pump blood towards the gills and around the fish's body. A fish has a four-chamber heart and some studies have shown that fish that migrate farther upstream have stronger, bigger hearts than fish that don't have as far to migrate upstream. Can you find the heart on your diagram and cut it out and put it in the correct position in your fish's body? Did you put your heart here? So if we lift the liver up a little bit, you can see these sort of kind of noodle-like or look like a bunch of little fingers. And those are called the pyloric cica. So they actually are attached and surround the stomach, which is right here. And they help to speed up digestion. All these little finger-like things increase the surface area. So this helps to increase nutrient absorption. This is especially important because fish's stomachs are a lot smaller than ours. And so they need to eat quickly and they need to be able to digest their food quickly. So these little pyloric cica help with that. Can you cut out the stomach and the surrounding pyloric cica and then put it in the correct location in your fish diagram? Did you put it here? Good job. Now we said that this fish was a male. These here are the male testes. So this is where the male produces sperm. There's two of them. So there's one of the gonads, the other one is underneath. Maybe we'll just cut that guy out of the way. Now we've got the male gonads or the testes. Cut out your testes and put them in the correct location inside your fish diagram. Okay, and here's the spleen. So we'll cut that out of the way. Cut out the spleen from the diagram and put it in your fish diagram. It goes below the stomach. Right here. This tube connected to the stomach running down towards the vent is actually the fish's intestine. So fish are a little bit different than us in that they only have one intestine and they take digested food from the stomach and move it towards the vent so that it can be excreted. And the intestine is also where most of the nutrients are absorbed. So I will cut that out of the way. Cut out the pyloric cica. So you can see how small the stomach is. But you can also see just by looking at it that the fish's stomach is, is very empty. And the reason for that is that once fish start going back to the river to spawn, they really don't eat as much, putting most of their energy into spawning. So if we would have caught these guys out in the ocean when they were kind of growing and getting bigger, your stomach probably would have been more full 
And typically pink salmon like to eat little invertebrates and plankton and bugs that are in the water. I'm just gonna cut the stomach out of the way and show you guys the next little feature there. Okay. Don't wanna wreck it. So, I'm just gonna move that out of the way for a second. So now we can see this greeny organ here. This is the gallbladder. So it was attached to the stomach. It's also attached to the liver. And the gallbladder in a fish works similar to your gallbladder. It collects and stores bile from the liver. And then it's used by the intestine to help digest any, any fat. And the color and the fullness of the bile in the gallbladder can actually tell us how recently the fish has eaten. So if it's yellow and almost empty, the fish would have eaten within 24 hours. This one is sort of a bluish green color, and that means that this fish hasn't eaten in about a week. And that would make sense based on what we saw in his stomach. Salmon have two kidneys, an anterior kidney, which functions to form red and white blood cells, and it's where hormones are produced. And then there's a posterior kidney, which is responsible for balancing out the amount of salt and water in the salmon. Find the kidney in your diagram, cut it out, and put it in the correct location inside your fish. Did you put it at the top, just below the spine? Good job. This little bit of transparent skin here actually creates a bubble and it's called the, called the air bladder or sometimes called the swim bladder or even the gas bladder. So when the fish is alive, this gas bladder acts like a balloon and it fills up with air and that's what helps to keep the fish buoyant and it can adjust how much air is in this gas bladder to help it go up and down in the water column. Now find the swim bladder in your diagram, cut it out, and put it inside your fish. So now we've looked at all of the internal features of our male pink salmon. We'll move him out of the way and we'll take a look at our female pink salmon so that you guys can see the difference between what the male organs look like and the female organs look like. All right, so here is our female pink salmon. And we'll take a look and see how her inner features look a little bit different than our male inner features. All right, so Look at that, what is the first thing that you notice about the difference between the inside of the female salmon and the inside of the male salmon? You can see that she has lots of eggs. So we'll pull this sack of eggs out. Here we go, we can see all of her eggs. All of the other features are the same. Oh, and there we can see that is the air bladder or the gas bladder. And then behind the swim bladder is the kidneys. And what we've got here is the liver. Do you guys remember what these little finger-like projections were called that surround the stomach? The pyloric cica. Pink salmon 
females tend to have 1,000 to 2,000 eggs inside of their bodies. Now looking at the inside features of the female, we've got the liver, the little heart up here, the pyloric cica, the stomach, there's this very small, very small stomach. Females have to spend more energy developing their eggs, so her stomach is, is smaller than the male's. And then we've got the intestine running from the stomach down to the vent. This, one, this is the spleen. Her other egg sac. The swim bladder or the gas bladder. And then behind there, we've got the kidneys. And that is it. So now you can see the difference between the male features and the female features. So your completed diagram should look something like this. And that's the male fish. Now we've looked at a female fish. We've seen that the internal organs all look the same, except for the gonads. So if your fish was a female, you could redo this diagram and replace the male gonads with the female gonads. Where would they go? Good job.